Welcome to Nachtwaffen Pilot with Penny Bradley. And today's guest is my long-term friend, Tony Rodriguez. I finally figured out how to say your name right. Uh, we finally got to meet Real World last November, and uh, I'm glad to, glad to have you back. Great. Great to be here. Hi, Penny. Uh, for the folks who don't know who you are, uh, you have a book out, Series Colony Cavalier. And I'll be honest, I haven't read it because I'm trying to write my own right now. And um, I've heard a lot of your videos, so I'm pretty sure I know the, the basic story. Uh, Tony was kidnapped when he was about nine years old because he pissed off the kid of an Illuminati. And he was sold into slavery, uh, first as a psychic for drug traders, secondly as a sex slave for a Satanist in Seattle, Washington. And when he could couldn't take their drug cocktail anymore. He got sold into a military, which in his case was what I call Nachtwaffen. So, um, but he was in the slave category, not in the pretend to be an officer category. I mean, reality is we're all slaves out there. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, um, it, the, the people that come forward and paint it as a rosy picture of something enjoyable, even if they had military service or military rank, uh, it doesn't fit in with what I remember. Um, to me, and, anybody that was really enjoying the system or benefiting from the system up there stayed up there. They were locals and they may, they may have done 20 and backs as well, but they were permanent residents of the series colony, for instance. But people that were taken from Earth and put back were not really, um, you know, well, treated well over across the board. No. Um, my understanding was that we were meant to become colonists once our time was up. But the agencies that, that trained us to go made sure they modified our DNA enough to make us unsuitable for that. Um, I was flat out told while I was there that the modifications, while they appreciated that I could replace a Draco on their ship, that they did not want my DNA in their gene pool. So That's right. That's exactly kind of how it was. Like it was very strict. They were, they were very, well, in my case, I mean, I'm, I'm lumping a lot of things into one spot. So I had many stops on my, during my time. I wasn't specifically just, you know, taken and gone to one spot. So I bounced around quite a bit. But the series colony um, corporation was very strict about that. And they had prearranged marriages that most of them opted into. They had the ability to opt out, but they were had they were a prearranged marriage that was based on genetics that they were doing. And um, they were very strict about who was with who even though they did encourage uh, the slave population to have a sexual existence, sex, uh, sexuality, to be hypersexual because they thought that people that were sexually active were more productive or, you know, in the workforce. Uh, uh, that, was, that was the rationale for what basically became all of the female military were used as, as pass around sex slaves in, on the ships. That was the standard. And I know you were kept in a different area from, from the folks working on the ships, but uh, that was- There was, there was a lot of sexuality. Um, it, it wasn't, you know, from the girls that I heard, they weren't like forced into it or something, but it was just encouraged. And they, they were, everybody was aware that they were going back somewhere so that there was, there was a real, you know, what have you got to lose kind of incentive. And uh, so they really, that, that was like, we, we heard uh, 
there was there was always a big rumor mill about who was sleeping with who. Oh yeah. And that people were very active, and that we were missed down guys down in the engineering in uh, cargo, and they, we were missing out on it. Um, being uh. slaves, that command was was a more of a social uh, gathering, but they did they encouraged across the board. They did encourage sexuality. So yeah, they different than down here. Very different from down here, and and they didn't care if you were straight or gay or bi or any of that. It was that's right. There was no state. There was st actually so between us, between the guys um, that were in, you know, my barracks was kind of like a prison with slave slave where the slaves were where we lived. Um, between the guys, we still did kind of, you know, you still would get kind of picked on, but there was no stigma of not like here. It was more like a European, um, you know, not that I know my way around Europe that great, but it was more of a, a, an open culture towards bisexuality. Yeah. Yeah. So I've it was, it was a lot Europe, more. So. Um, I know a lot of Europeans tolerant. and I know the attitudes that they've had, but I may be just attracting that type because I'm less judgmental than a lot of the folks are. Um, mm. <clears throat> I had a grandfather who was gay and my youngest child was born intersex. So because of that situation, I've been on the edge of that community for a long time without being part of it. I, um, you know, I think back to it on how it was and it was very, like I said, it was very open still between men. There's always a pecking order. It's more of a dominance thing. So um, I think that that's what it was. But, you know, what we were told basically, if I'm saying this right, you know, and we jumped into this interview and we went straight into the deep water, uh, right? I, I so, always do that. Um, I always did. But you, I always say. You haven't I, watched any of my videos or you would know this. So yeah, that's fine. No, that's I, fine. I, I don't. see you turning red. So I, I caught you. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. Well, what I wanted to say was that I, I've said this in other interviews, and I'm pretty sure that it was kind of the standard up there that there was no heterosexuality or homosexuality or any other sexual. You're either sexually active or you're not. And yeah. with, with certain people, you're not sexually active and some people you are sexual with. And that's that simple. And that's that's kind of yeah. the what they what in a nutshell, because they we had there were snippets. There were things like commercials and snippets that we would see even as crew. And that would come across, we would get little briefings on our, on our own screen. And there were snippets about that. And they were like, you know, if you're active, you're more productive. They would just say it just like that. Yep. And it was okay. You're either sexual or you're not. And there's no, they, and they, they would snip, they were very short mm -hmm. suggestions that would go in and, oh, and by the way, today we're going to do this. Let's everybody pull together team. And these were little things like right when we started in the morning at our workstation, this came on. And we had we had a 30 to 60 second daily announcements of what's going on, little graphic representations. And then these, they'd hit you with these things. Keep a clean ship is a fast ship kind of thing. And uh, so that was in it. You know, and we had we had that suggestion of it. But they again, they weren't they weren't trying to make us happy. They were trying to make us productive. And they had all the data at their fingertips of what worked and what didn't work for that. So they had real, really good carrot and stick um techniques and they are lifestyle i was talking to some uh people i had breakfast with um the michigan chapter of collecting consciousness the simon parks group so we okay. had they had a thing they had a thing this week and i went out i to know i know who he is yes he, yeah. he probably doesn't know who i am but that's cool yeah i don't know if he knows who i am either but um anyhow his group is they're worldwide and they're they've been really good to me when my book came out they helped me with a a book sign live book signings and i think we're going to line up and maybe we may line up another one but i went out we all had breakfast you know like 10 of us and we were talking about um you know the culture up there and the how how things are different down here versus mm -hmm. and um it was just an interesting uh conversation i kind of forget where i was going with this i just had short-term memory loss but okay. um it was an interesting conversation, and I, I talked about that, that, you know, that I think a lot of societies kind of dumped down down here, and they've done what they can to stunt human sexuality in our society down here because it, it's kind of a roadblock to 
to people um, being productive is a roadblock. So they don't want everybody to be as productive. They, you know, we've been really they don't um, stunted. Really want us to be productive. They don't want us to to excel. They don't want us to find ourselves. I guess is the idiom. Uh, they want us to be angry and frustrated and dominated and controlled and fit into our little cubby and that's it. Um, that's right. And there's a very real dumbing down of, of the masses just in my lifetime. We've seen, and I, I, we were talking about this in another group that, you know, the average IQ in America was used to be 110. Yeah. And now it's 98. So yeah. it's, it's documented, it's documentable evidence that we are being dumbed down slowly over time. And there's yeah. not any real, the only reason for that is just to de, just to make us not a threat on the global stage for something that they're going to do for something that they have planned. Yeah. That's not great. Uh, I have problems because I'm continuing to be taken. Uh, and so I, I am in that German culture for, they usually take me to 40 to 60 years. So I'm gone. And then the next morning I wake up and I'm back here. And I've been that for all this time and I've been regenerated. So I look pretty the whole time. And I look in the mirror here and I'm like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> so you're still getting these. You're getting big, big sensations of being taken still. Uh, I'm getting memories and, and knowing a lot of what's going on out there. And then I'm, as a host of a show, I'm having to research, well, who's going to be my next guest? And I'm listening to all of the flat out crap that's being told. And because, you know, three nights ago, I was, I was driving a ship because I'm a navigator, I was driving the ship and we were rescuing colonists from a planet that was destroyed by guardians because we were too awful. And basically the state police came and told us to shut down. And, and of course, high command said, F you. And so they blew up the planet. So we're redialing going back, getting the colonists and bringing them to the solar system and putting them in the Oort cloud. And as we come through the sun, because that's the portal, we're being attacked by military industrial complex ships. And then I'm hearing people telling me, oh, we're having these great victories where we're beating the pants off the Germans and the Draco. And it's Guys, you're attacking refugee ships, women and children. <laughs> you're making this sound like some great heroic operation. These are humans that, that four generations ago, they were on Earth. So th there's a lot of people that have seemingly operational info that come forward and you know, I take it with a grain of salt on one hand. I hope that it's real. And I always hope that what people come forward and say is like genuine. But the other hand, you get stories that don't match each other. Mm -hmm. And so they should. And so, you know, maybe, but you know what I mean? Like you should, you, you'd think that things would all kind of be on the same page. The, the, you, um, <clears throat> it's like Americans at Vietnamese and the Vietnam War they're going to tell different stories about the same events, but there should be a thread that com that is a common ground. You know, be the same event should be talked about, you yeah. know, the event itself should be, would be, yeah. should make sense. Exactly. And we're not getting that. The other thing is we're getting nowadays. It's very cool to come forward and say, I don't know where everybody's got the star family. Everybody was like, you know, I'm incarnate. Yeah. I was a Palladian, and it's they've turned it into a kind of a cool urban legend thing that um, is not based on any kind of provable thing. So whether it's real or not, that's great, but it's not provable. So mm -hmm. you know, uh, that's great. Mm -hmm. But again, w w at where we're at right now in 
the narrative of disclosure where where they start they are still keeping it all from us like they're still saying maintaining that there's no life out there that they don't know what's going on like we're still in the under we're still on that side of of the event so there's well, a lot of there's a lot of info coming through that I, I feel it's premature you know i'm not talking about you there, i'm talking about a lot of was, other people there was a cia archivist who came forward specifically to verify me and she showed up in the round table that we did memorial day weekend she showed up in that and she looked at everybody's camera shot and and verified that everyone in that round table that she had a file on them now that doesn't mean everything you remember is right but that you were involved i gotta ask you penny are you for what do you think um because me personally i'm kind of afraid of the cia right now and i don't mean afraid like shaking in my shoes but i'm kind of like waiting on them to do something stupid because we're starting to see cia people come forward and they're all you know running around yeah. with lightsabers and they all brushing elbows together they're telling all these crazy stories that are that everybody in the SSP community knows isn't true. And I'm just saying, like, is this a, you know, what do you think? Do you think it's an attempt to hijack people that have come forward? Or do you think that it's an ongoing op? Or are they just have extra time and money on their hands to where they keep a keep kind of a, their hand on the pulse of of the of the truth or community? What do you think? I think they've kept their hand on the pulse of the tr truth or com community since the uh, UFO flap of 52 in DC, that they have been keeping an eye on us all along. I think that, I personally think that anyone who has been a star in disclosure for longer than a few minutes <laughs> um, is probably somehow involved with them. Now, I've been, I've been approached, oh God, since I came public, I've had Illuminati, I've had CIA, I've had NSA, I've had MI6, I've had Russians, all kinds of people approach me i mean we were discussing this earlier that that over half of my following is in russia rather than the united states they translate everything i do and it's funny because they're having to use a vpn to be able to even hear me anymore since, since the thing in ukraine mm. but so they're they're actually breaking their own laws to hear me and it's like anyone who is telling the truth as they know it is going to be approached by all of these people. Now, I've got lots of them that are giving me tidbits. And I'll check it out. So when I talk about politics, when I talk about what's happening between countries, I'm not talking about it from Penny who sits here in California in her apartment. I'm talking about it from Penny who researches and who has, who has fancy people telling me clues. Now, are they sending me in directions where I'm going to find disinfo? I've noticed a couple of them doing that. So can I trust everything they tell me? Oh, hell no. So after I think that's some discernment. I, well, I think that's an important thing. Like earlier you said like you didn't read my book because you're writing your own book. And I think that's very important. Early on when I was coming forward and talking, that was one of the first things I did quit watching the info. I quit watching people that were talking because, well, I mean, early on what happened was somebody would say something and I go, wow, I kind of remember what he's talking about. And if I talked about it, 
it looked like plagiarism or like I was fake, like I was learning it. So I got kind of upset and I just quit watching everybody's info because it clouds up the water of your own account, your own memories. So it's yeah. very, I, it's, it's just, I'm, I'm somebody that makes the videos and doesn't watch the videos. Well, I had this lump of, of memories that were just swirling and entangled and they were all in German. And I had hmm. no idea what I was remembering. And the only way for me to grab back hold of sanity was to figure out what it was I was remembering. And I spent three years sitting with this stuff before I went public. So what, when did you begin to remember? Um, I, my memories were activated by an NSA group. They, That's right. That's right. They, I remember. They now. used my remember code in mm -hmm. April of 2013. So, in fact, the agent used the remember code and his boss spent almost a year afterwards teaching me how to be a dissident and not be arrested. Hmm. And when an Air Force NSA major is teaching you how to not get arrested, you pay attention. Hmm. <laughs> so I've managed, I managed to stay out of trouble for the most part, except my first Facebook profile got um, permabanned because I made the mistake of sharing a album of Germanic symbols so that people in our group could uh, work with them to stop being triggered every time they saw them. And it had nothing to do with the politics of it. It was, it was psychology. Because if you're being triggered by something, the best way to stop it is to slowly expose yourself to it for longer and longer periods of time. And, that, and these were visual aids for the process. They were never meant to be a political statement. But Facebook saw it otherwise. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, there's no uh, there's no rhyme or reason to Facebook these days uh, for their policies. Um, how is I want so I'm curious, how is the book going? So I'm working on my second book and it's going very slow, but I still I still aim to try to have it done by the end of the year because I expect it to uh, come together after I get all the con conceptual things drawn you know written up that I've, I've i imagine it'll come together quickly but how is it for you it was very hard it took me six years to write the first one okay the first the book that wants to be written hmm. okay you know there's one that the people want and there's one that wants to be written the one that wants to be written i've got 30 pages of that's and the one that people really need though believe that me the one that that everybody wants me to write, I've got about 20 pages and it it I'm having trouble organizing it. So at this point, I'm just writing and I'll sort it out later. I'll tell you right now, don't even worry about what people want. It says your book. It's your if, if it's going to be in an autobiography form of what's going on and what you know, then that's that's the way to do it, because that's I kind of made my what, mind up. That's what that in the they first place. want is the autobiography you go through chronological, you do it in order and you do it all in, in fourth grade English so they can all understand it. That's the one they want. And I'm having trouble organizing it because my memory is not linear. Hmm. The one that wants to be written answers three questions. Why did the Germans go into space? Where did they get their technology? And where did they get the occult knowledge for Schwarzer Sonnet? That's the one that wants to be written. And that's the one I've been working on for three years. And yeah, I have that's what 30 you're, pages. <laughs> that's what you're calling on to do. If that's what you're really feeling, then that's really where you need to go. I mean, I would just let the book be as honest as possible. There were things that 
there were things that I went through that I debated with that I did not want to put in my book that found mm-hmm. their way in. And there were things that got taken out of the book at the end because there was, because people have seen enough because it's my diet. It's like a diary. And uh, they've seen enough peered into my, in, into my mind enough. The second yeah. book will be a little bit different. Um, and it's going to be all, it's nonlinear. The second book is nonlinear. So after having the first one, the major account going from A to B, I have that freedom now. And uh, so, but I'm not going to recommend you to do follow my footsteps in that, you know, make a linear book. If you don't want to do that, then you absolutely shouldn't. You should write down what you feel is the most important. And what's going to do the, be the best for you. And because that's what people are going to like. That's honestly, I think that's what people enjoy. That's what people want to read. They want to know the truth. They don't want to, they don't want something prepackaged. They want it as true as it can be. Uh, I think that's why people follow me because like we've talked about before, most of the public wants to listen to a man and I'm having people hear me in spite of the the prejudice and i think it's because i'm completely honest and i i try to keep it 3d grounded i mean i was kidnapped really 3d i was put into mind fracture really 3d i was put into a military situation really 3d and that's what I'm talking about. The biggest shock to me is I'm talking 3D military in space. And all the feedback I get is religion. That that shocked the hell out of me. You know, because I'm not talking about anything religious. I mean, a lot, a lot of people think that everything in space is some kumbaya. And that's, it, they think that, you know, there are, there are, people have these accounts of ETs coming down that are highly advanced and highly moral, you know, like very spiritually advanced. And they did think that have, every did single- Did you ever meet any of those out there? Once, uh, once I did, but it was a very rare thing. But the thing is, yes, they're out there, but most of them are not. They're people just like us. I tell people, I said, yeah. it's just the same way that you would go into the jungle And you might meet a fuzzy animal or you might meet one with claws and teeth. It's the exact same thing when you go into space. You might meet something fuzzy and happy and you might meet something with claws and teeth that want to bite you. And nature extends beyond the sky. It's the same exact rules and it just keeps going. So uh, that's where you get the people with the religious context. I think a lot of them have such a background in religion that's hard for them to let go and and kind of put their, they don't want to accept that danger is real beyond the sky, you know. Yeah, but, uh, I keep being told, well, when when are the Germans going to come back and save us? And I'm like, uh. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, that's so, that's my okay. reaction too. <laughs> so they are dumbing down the population. That the average IQ was 110, and now it's 98. That's how they're saving us. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what that that's what's going on. They shut but the, the door. But the Germans to- are not <laughs> doing <laughs> that. Our our own governments are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you know what i mean they they went into space and they're saying you guys you guys are staying put you stay here we're going to be out there don't worry about it don't worry about us that's basically what's happened in, well as uh, as in a l- lieutenant out there or as they call me a leutnant um i was told that earth had been destroyed in a cobalt war that there was nothing here. We don't even think about Earth. Why why would we come rescue people that chased us off and and don't let us back? Hmm. There was a little bit of that. I think it was one of those things that uh, you know, I don't want to I don't want to touch on a I don't want to touch on a very hot point subject nowadays that they're banning people about but a lot of people know things that are going on right now in the last few years that are not true, that the, the official story is telling us and uh-huh. people aren't believing it. And uh, the earth being destroyed was like that on Ceres Colony. So there were, it was the official story, but nobody believed it. You know, everybody kind of had a hunch that it was BS. And then there were so many people that had operational knowledge that the earth was just fine. 
So yeah. we were doing trade missions. So there were a lot of people that were on the earth yesterday that you would bump into. And so the, it got the, the facts slipped, slipped through. So it was one of those things that was, you couldn't question the official story, but everybody knew it was BS kind of thing. That's what it was like back then. And that's what it's like on earth right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those... Oh, we're getting it back. I mean, you know, dare I say we're in a, uh, we're in a t scary time. They're starting to ramp up. Uh, the, here come the masks again. So they're starting to but ramp up the BS. That part of it doesn't scare me as much as I had a blog. Uh, 2012, 2013. And I refer it was a research blog. I had lots of references. And I have to go back every six months and redo all the links because they're broken because somebody's deleting all the reference material. Hmm. That bothers me because if you can't find factual reference material, you can't figure out how we got here. And if you don't know how we got here, you sure as hell are not going to be able to fix it. And that really bothers me. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say about that. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of fishy things that go on when you're, when, you know, when we're talking publicly in this community. The, a lot of people that are watching us are nerdy, and I mean that in a uh, love. You know, I'm saying I'm not picking on that, but I'm saying with with that comes the ability to do things to hack computers and hack phones and things there's a lot of people that are in the audience that have every ability to spy on on us and when you are talking publicly you have an you have interests so i personally know that i've i've had my phone hacked quite a bit and there are things that happen to my electronics all the time that don't make any sense uh things get deleted off my calendar that should be there there are, uh, it's on and on and on so uh, i've i use a paper calendar old school, Pen pencil or ink on paper. Um, I don't have a cell phone. There's something about my personal energy field that if I pick up a phone and I use it more than once, it stops and you can't get it to turn back on. Mm -hmm. So um, I have an old school landline. I, uh, I miss it, to be honest. I got talked into a smartphone originally. And now I need the damn thing, but I uh, I kind of don't like the 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 uh, eyeballs it has on my life. I what I I do this stuff on is uh, my next door neighbor builds gamer builds, and he says, Penny, I've got the perfect system for you. Just pay me for the parts. So I got a three thousand dollar machine for eight hundred bucks, and. It, it does video really, really, really well. I just have to learn how to modulate the sound on it yet. So. Yeah, it's time. I think after, um, so I've got a round of talks coming up and then I'm going to redo all the electronics again. Uh, probably shouldn't announce that publicly, but it's true. Well, um, a couple of my followers um, bought me a server. And I am figuring out <clears throat> so I bought the manual hmm. yeah I was a programmer back in the 70s so I bought the manual I'm trying to figure out the manual so that I can run my own server so I don't have to worry about an IT guy and uh at that point, my plan is to let all of the SSP and super soldiers who wish to store on my server so we're, we have some place we can access our information without it being subject to YouTube or other corporations censoring it 
and there'll just be a small fee for the the bandwidth because I'm on social security disability and I can't pay for it by myself. So, I mean, Rumble charges quite a bit. Whatever I charge, it'll be less than Rumble does. So. Um, so I guess go on, anything else? Uh, what other question? What other questions? You're going to be doing more conferences? I've got a couple lined up, uh, nothing directly after that. I think there might be a couple coming, you know, whenever whenever I run out of conference books, then it seems like they seem to pop up, like one begets the next. Um, I'm trying to stay away from the expensive ones, the ones that don't pay for you to travel and get there. I'm trying to stay away from that just out of, out of uh, you know, because the, the last couple of years I spent a lot of money traveling. Yeah. But um, we have some really good ones coming up. Uh, there's one in San Jose that I'm going to go to. It's a uh, based on uh, technology. So people that have experienced the secret space program are going to pitch technologies that we've already witnessed up there to people in academia, you know, scientists to see if they can take the idea and run with it and kind of develop some of these technologies down here which is a brilliant idea, um, but it's a high speed conference and I'm expecting to go there and speak in front of a lot of skeptics and which I'm up for, I'm not afraid of, but it's like, uh, I, maybe I've been a little spoiled the last couple of conferences that I've done. People are very, very supportive. I get overwhelming. You know, they want to give me hugs and they're Tony, we love you. I've read your book. I saw your stuff. So this one, I, 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 I'm kind of expecting just people, they're scientists. So it's yeah. obviously they're going to be skeptical. So well, I'm, maybe, and I'm tailor making not. my presentation around that. Maybe not. Yeah, that's true. Because um, FISIG, um, I can't remember what it's about. They they are a group of garage me garage mechanic types, but they're physicists, <laughs> and they're they're do it at home geeks. Love them. They're trying to figure out how to create zero point energy modules. And they have this meeting once a month and they bring in a lot of us to talk. And they, when you, when you can describe the nuts and bolts of, of what the technology you saw, they go nuts just eat it up because they are looking for that one detail that they can use to make their project work. And so don't, don't write off the nerds. Well, we'll see. So anyhow, I'm kind of, I'm excited. Like I said, that I'm going to talk about some of the, um, the educational things that I, technologies that I witnessed uh, that were different than what kids get in school. And uh, because I think that would revolutionize a lot of things in the world. And oh, yeah. um, zero point energy, replicators, med beds, or regen tanks, either one, those three would, would change the world entirely. Well, those are things that if you witness them, doesn't mean you can recommend how to design one. You know, like those are yeah. like, so we're in the conceptual stage, like you know, the concepts of technology that may have happened that nobody knew about. And so I'm going to present some of the, and there are other, I'm not the only guy there. So there are other people doing it. So that's a pretty good conference. And like I said, I'm going to structure this, my slideshow and my talk uh, geared towards people that may be completely skeptical. So in order, in order to just not be brushed off or, or, you know, when you come out and just say it matter of factly to somebody that's a skeptic in the first place, you kind of have to, you kind of have to introduce them and kind of talk them into the subject with some evidence. That, that, that's the problem I have is I just mm -hmm. kind of blurt it. <laughs> well, the thing is I've got, I've got evidence. So there's evidence yeah. supporting my, my um, account and my book, what happened to me in my book, there's a lot of evidence and I'm going to present that. Yeah. I'll open with that and uh, with uh, many aspects of it. And that way it won't be as easily discounted. The other things when I get into right. the space, the time and space. And then the other conference after that will be Orlando in October. The um, man, I can't even think of these long names of these conferences. I, I've come, I, it's so bad. I could look it up. I will, but they, it's in Orlando. They, give me the links and for for the conferences, and I'll put them in the description when I upload it. 
Sure. And uh, that's going to be a good one. And uh, there's a lot of good names there. So, and I expect that crowd to be people that are fully aware of my information and it'll, I expect to be very supportive. And that's, I'll tell you, that's, that's the funnest part. It's not about speaking. I mean, obviously I like to share the information, the information that the space program, secret space program exists. And these colonies, corporations are working off world and they're very well established and that there's life everywhere. And there's a there is a universe up there that uh, we can participate in. That information is very important to me to proliferate to let people know. Yeah, it is. Um, but the other thing is getting getting together with people that already know this and that are in the audience, and you learn from them too. I mean, that's the best part about going to conferences is the the people in the audience have a wealth of knowledge, and it's great to get along with them and just kind of go and have a great time. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that and it's watching the other speakers there. Yeah, the, the conference we were at in November, um, that was the biggest group of us SSP people that I've ever been in physically. And uh, I mean, I've been on online groups, but that that's different. This was, this was really special. I'm normally an introvert and just sit back and I'm quiet and watch everything. Yeah, I know. I talk too much. <laughs> no, I'm for looking anybody. for the name of the conferences right now. Um. But, but um, <clears throat> I'm really an introvert and these things, by the end of them, I'm just drained completely and I have to spend the day after basically sleeping before we can even drive home. Mm -hmm. they're it's, exhausting it's true i'm the they, same way they just completely drain me and mm -hmm. i do it because before i did them people would show up at my front door <laughs> <laughs> now it's like uh i'm going to a conference you can come meet <clears throat> me there and be with other people like us <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so far, everybody that showed up at my door ha has been good people, knock on wood, but the idea that they are just showing up scared the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I think that's, I think that I would have to go ahead and call that inappropriate, like if yeah. I had somebody showing up here. So I live in Michigan where a lot of people don't follow the information. I'm kind of out in, I'm out in the sticks and I love it. So but I think that's a little inappropriate. I do get a lot of emails and, you know, th there's a lot of traffic. And there was to the point where I was uh, doing Zoom calls and meeting with people. And that's why I introduced a fee because it was just too much to take keep up with. And some people weren't serious. You weed people out that are not serious about talking to you by having a fee involved. So it's worked. Yeah. But I, I still uh, talk to quite a bit of people a week. About well, it. I, I have a Patreon, but my attitude is, okay, if you want to support me, here's my Patreon. I don't give a lot of exclusive stuff there, but, you know, if you want, if you want to subsidize my, my Rumble or, or my uh, internet bill um, or my show, because I pay, it, it comes total it comes to about fifty dollars a show that i'm paying which is cheap compared to other networks so it costs money it costs money to host the website it costs money to have to upload it costs money for things uh -huh. my show is the same way and i had to monetize things thankfully um it's working out right now uh in fact i'm looking to expand like i'm getting editors i'm, I'm looking to expand things because it's going well and i think that I think at the end of the day, there's still hardly anybody has been exposed to the information that we that we share, that these programs are real. And uh, I think it's very wise, important. You're right. Percentage yeah. wise, the population has no idea what we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, I walk, I can walk into a local store and people are clueless. Um, a, my doctors have figured out that I have a podcast, but I. I don't think any of them have watched it. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, well, you know, I, but, I, uh, I still enjoy keeping it separate from a lot of my personal life. Um, yeah. 
you know, but that's not on purpose. I'm not that I'm afraid to talk to anybody in my life about what I've been through. It's just that um, somebody that doesn't believe in it, any of it or is unaware, then they're kind of big, you know, ignorance is bliss. And I don't go around forcing it on people. What uh, what's going on in the skies above. So um, I keep it like that so far. So good. It's been really good. People who ask me, like, I heard you're into such and such. I ask them, well, what exactly did you hear? <laughs> hmm. And and I've I have learned, especially the last two years, with all the the hostile guests that I've had, I have learned to tailor the discussion to what I know they understand. And that was a skill that was very hard for me to learn. Um, hmm. Well, I mean, Penny, I mean, what you've had hostile guests. I mean, that's something that I don't know if it makes for good, like shock, shock presentations of, of a show. But I mean, you, I don't think you should tolerate people that are hostile. You know, it's one thing to be, um, inquisitive or you know health like a healthy skepticism but people that are hostile that overtly you know insult you or give you uh, i um uh, I, it pains me to hear that uh, i i've decided since i had the surgery in december that i'm not going to deal with hostile people anymore and uh i so i've been a lot more careful about who i've let be on my show and that's part of why I'm doing um, pre-records now is we had another host on the network who had the Zoom code who was coming in and would just completely take over my show. And so if I do it on my own Zoom, he can't do that. Yeah, that doesn't, uh, that yeah. sounds like a bunch of drama that w I think most people would rather live without, but especially watching it on your show people in the audience yeah i've i've just i'm going to do it my way or i'm going to quit because if it gets to where it's constant stress then i'm not accomplishing anything but giving myself an ulcer it's true so and i'm not in this to be some glory hog I'm in here because I want kids to stop being kidnapped going forward. There's nothing we do out there that cannot be done by consenting adults. That's right. And uh, I've, always, I've often said that, that it's our highest crime. It's literally our highest crime is kidnapping yeah. children. And so, uh, you know, if that's what you think is a benevolent ET race, you know, that species that comes down and in the middle of the night, in the middle of your room, takes your youngest kid out of their bed to go and do whatever they want. Uh, that's not benevolence. It's actually a felony and it's our highest crime. Uh, so that's the situation we're in when we're talking about all kinds of e ET abductions without the secret space program involved. Like it happens globally. There are tens of thousands of witnesses and people that come forward with the same thing. And it's our, literally mankind's highest crime across the board is dealing, taking our kids. So until yep. something like that changes and there's a level of consent involved, we are being victimized and we're in a very bad situation. We're in a very bad place. And so well, our leaders capitulated uh, at some point. Our leaders definitely capitulated at some point. When I was abducted, it was humans in military gear. They didn't have the markings, or I was four, they might have had the markings, but I don't remember them. And they came and got me out of my bed. And they drove me cross country. That was kidnapping. Mm -hmm. Whether or not they put you back the same night is doesn't matter. No, exactly. So it was a major felony. And I know there were other kids in that Jeep with me. We were taken across state lines, which makes it a federal felony. And I was seriously abused to the point that I have over 2,000 altars. And that 
was permanent. I've got medical tests that show that I have been spun in a centrifuge at some point to prevent alter reintegration. And, <clears throat> oh yeah, hmm. there's medical things that because what they found with the astronauts and what they have found through psychology studies, you blend the two and you can prove if you've been in a centrifuge to prevent alter reintegration, it will leave your brain separated. It looks like um, it looks like a form of dementia. But I was in my twenties the first time it showed up on a CAT scan. So I've had this consistently since I was in my late twenties. Interesting. I'm kind of curious. I'm kind of I'm getting to the point where um, you know I'm starting to fall apart too. So I'm getting in front of the doctor more often, and I'm kind of curious what things to to look for that may be a side effect. You know. Okay. Uh, your bones are gonna get brittle early. You, uh, you get autoimmune disorders, and they're more common in the women, but they're more intense and painful in the men. Uh, you get memory issues because you've got alters going and you'll have less control over shifting alters. Hmm. So I haven't had, it, to my knowledge, problems with alters. So I haven't gone through Good. that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I haven't had that. So not not to say is there's not something there, but um, I haven't. I had haven't that ever service. noticed you shifting, but that's yeah. that's what the common threads are. Mm -hmm. um, the autoimmune disorders are generally being called fibromyalgia, but they involve endocrine shutdown. They involve kidney and liver disease when you haven't been drinking. Uh, they involve things along that line. You'll look like, to someone off the street, you will look like you're 20 years older, 30 years older than you actually are, hmm. as far as your health. Mm -hmm. But your face will still look very young. And, I, uh, and the combination is just really startling. Mm -hmm. I mean, do I look 66? <laughs> if you don't look at my neck. <laughs> I thought you were way younger. Thanks. <clears throat> um, but we'll see. Things will surface. I... Uh... I think it's moving at a slow pace, but it's moving along. I think that disclosure is moving along. Um, so we'll see. Uh, and there could be one of a couple paths that all of mankind goes down at post disclosure. So hopefully uh, we end up with the one that we can live with and be happy with. So uh, but I, disclosure I've is moving seen, along. I've seen a couple of um, possible paths. And uh, the one I would like to see is where humanity finally decides that we're one species and works together as one. And uh, my contacts among the guardians have said, eventually we're going to be offered the opportunity for them to parent us as a race. Hmm. The idea being that our creators abandoned us. And so we were basically, as a species, we're basically street kids. So I always look at it like this, like are we have, we obviously, we have people that are, we've either voted or hired to be in charge and handle things for handle the administration like the roads and the schools and the laws 
And at some point, um, you know, I don't think they ever worked for our, for our interests beyond their own interests. And so what I'm saying is when, when you see society move into the, move into a mode where the system is set up for you to succeed rather than set up for you to fail. Yeah. Are we going to go into thing. that side of thing? You know, like we're, we're right now, the system is set up for you to just barely get by and they're not really, they don't really teach people to be better and they don't groom people to be better. They're actually setting people up to be worse. Like you go to school, you don't learn how to use the system. You learn, you learn a bunch of useless information. So it's like, makes me wonder like post disclosure are people are we going to get a revamp are we going to get a system that fosters success out of people for that's, real, like, genuinely that's why i said it it has to be based on us being one species because right now yeah, there's the elites my, and then there's the there's public. The, there's yeah exactly and the elites from my interactions with them, I have found they are getting telepathic instructions from, uh, they think it's an ET race. And the, the voices in their heads are so loud, they cannot think. They simply have to obey. And so the instructions are not coming from here. That connection has to be broken for us to ever be free. Interesting. So, <clears throat> yeah. Do I trust? I... Do I trust these sources? I don't know, but there are times I can hear those voices trying to tell me what to do, and because of the genetic modifications, I can tell them to piss off. So I do know there are beings out there. Now, are they in physical, are they in physical bodies and speaking telepathically, or are they interdimensionals basically trying to influence 3D? I don't know. When you hear a voice in your head, you don't know where it is. That's that's why I've never trusted channelers, is they don't know who they're hearing. I agree. I totally agree with that. So there has to be trust, but verify. So anybody could be anybody that it could, like you said, if it don't, if you don't know where it's coming from and there's no, there's no, then it all, all of it has to be disregarded no matter how important it seems. That's how I feel about all of it. I really, I'm, I, like I said, when you talk about people that are coming forward, like, you know, on YouTube that are telling people what's going on or like, it's a disturbing trend that people are coming up and assuming positions of authority or assuming positions of knowing with absolutely no vetting or proof or background or no, no, nothing, nothing supportive at all. Well, and it's, they're coming out of the woodwork these days. I'm seeing a lot of people who are taking alternative holy books. Okay, there's a whole category of them. It's the Law of One, the Urantia book, uh, the Voyager series by Ashayana Dean. Um, and then they're also looking into the Vedas and some of the Hindu and Buddhist texts. And, you know, I went to seminary, I've read some of this stuff. So when I hear them speaking this, I'm thinking to myself, okay, you've read such and such. But then they're quoting these books without giving the reference. Okay, that's plagiarism. And they're, they're not telling the public that these are books they've read. They're presenting it as their own as it's their information yeah because people yeah. that are new to the subject are unaware of the old stuff from the 90s and the early 2000s yeah and that's that's on one side and on the other side they're presenting a lot of wishful thinking i wish i could uh, say this in a different way but there's money to be made 
by people doing that. They're out there, you know, they, they get a book on, they get a channel started and they tell people all this stuff that's basically just re rehashed from other people and with mm -hmm. their own spin and there's a crowd to be had nowadays you can do it. So it's really scary to see the ones that are buying the likes and uh, things as such, not a, not even a genuine channel. So, uh, you know, we live in that time. I think that, like I said, I think that the three letter agencies that we, we finally caught their eye, they had their hands full and now they're, they're getting around to us in the, in the secret space program community. And uh, they're really starting to flood it with a bunch of a-holes. Uh, I think they've flooded it for a while. Uh, I've taken a good look at some of the older stuff and thought, where in the hell did they get that information? Um, I've seen <clears throat> stories that involved both animals and humans. And the disclosure movement only talked about the animals. They never talked about the humans. And when you call, when you talk to the people who, who were doing the reporting, and this was in the 70s, 80s, and, and you ask them, well, why didn't you talk about the humans too? And you're told, well, we were trying to keep it clean. Really? You know, and, and a lot of the things, you know, you know, I have a, a PDF collection of, of the experiencer reports, the books that were written in the 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s. And they're almost old enough to be past copyright. And... Hmm. <clears throat> So I've got a collection of those in PDF and I've been reading them and you look at their descriptions and all of the ones that we're being told were Pleiadians, they describe Germans. Hmm. <laughs> you know, they're, they're in Hanabu, they're tall and blonde and Nordic looking and they speak German. And they're a Palladian. Everybody's a Palladian nowadays. Everybody's a super soldier. Everybody's a Palladian from yeah. being told from somebody else that that's what they were from their tarot card reading or whatever is going on. Yeah. And uh, it's scary. That's I said this to somebody. That really bothers me is they have no memories of their own, but some psychic told them. Yes. And they're uh, public. I said to somebody recently, you know, they said what they're talking about the star family lineage. And I'm like, I don't need a, I don't believe I was from anywhere around here. A star that would have a name on it. If I did incarnate here from elsewhere, which I believe I did, but I believe it was, there's, we incarnate from all over the place, not just the neighborhood of stars that everybody knows from t-shirts. Exactly. Secondly, to say that you're a Palladian, there's over 800 stars in the open cluster of the Pleiades. There are globular clusters around it. And so 800 stars on an average, we have 200 and, uh, but 210 moons in our solar system. We have eight planets. So 218 bodies that are, that can be colonized in our solar system times the 800 leaves us with about 175,000 worlds in the Pleiades that could be individual species. Oh, that's, that's something else. Most people don't realize Earth is part of the Pleiades. So it's well, what I'm saying is it doesn't answer the question to say you're a Pleiadian or yeah. you're a, you know, the, it, and it doesn't matter. I think it's like it's a game that they're get, they're stirring people up and kind of letting them participate in a, like it's fun. But it doesn't. Yeah. But what it does is clouding the water from people that are really trying to gen deliver genuine truths about what's going on. And uh, I, I feel like uh, I don't know. I just feel like it's I, I, your star family from where you incarnated, and I'm kind of you're a Lyran or an Andromeda. I'm kind of like, okay, so what do you do with that? What do we do with this info? Because it doesn't make a at the end of the day, it doesn't make a difference in any way. No, it doesn't. And I, I'm kind of like. Um, what do you call it? I feel like I'm giving people like brutal honesty that's hurting them when I talk about it like that, when I mention it, well, but it's, they, it's they, real. It's the truth. They went through a fad where you were a starseed. They went through a fad where you were a twin flame. And hmm. 
because of the trauma twin sy syndrome thing that I had with the agent who I who activated my memories. I thought for a while he was twin flame. I now understand the trauma twinning process and and know that's what it really was because we were both at Langley together. Uh, he remembered being number five and I was number seven. They gave us numbers. So um, he was my trauma twin, but for a couple of years, I thought he was my actual twin flame. And then I studied the historical documents about Bashert, which is the Jewish doctrine that Twin Flame is based on. And you don't have someone that you're having to chase under those doctrines. If that person is your twin, you don't have to chase them. They're going to want to be with you. So if you're with, if you're chasing somebody, you're past the point of twins. You're into, you're stalking that person. It's not your twin, right? You don't. Right. They... If you have to stalk them, they're not your twin. They're something else. <clears throat> so I see so many people that are stalking people and, and crying twin flame when it's just an obsession. Yeah, it sounds more like uh, they see something in that person that they need to heal in themselves. So they cling to it to try to heal it in a way, you know, to ha have that person be responsible for what they can't be. So um, w they went through the star families they went through star seeds and now they've seen super soldiers or secret space program and each one lasts about five years interesting so yeah I, uh so that's where that uh makes a lot of sense but it's a, ultimately it's a fad ultimately it's a fad and judging from how long I've been dealing with people with no memories who wanted me to tell them what they did, um, we're probably about halfway through the five years. Hmm. And then those well, of us who are real will have less to fight with. I think in the last year, so where are we at, you know, it's um, the end of July, I think in the last year, there was a period where everybody was a super soldier for all of a sudden. It was like they were coming out. Everybody was everybody that went and got a hit. Everybody that got a hypno regression came out of it a super soldier for a while for a, from a lot of people. And they really wanted to talk about it. And but they had nothing to talk about because of they had zero memories. It was something that somebody else basically told them. So, I mean, you just can't go by that. That's, you know, and to be clear, the people that are coming forward, that have come forward, that are doing talks have very tangible memories that line up with other tangible memories behind the scenes. So you have to have overlap. There are things that have to happen in order to, to prove and talk about. And so in my case, uh, who knows why for, I think there's a lot of different reasons why I got all my memories back or most of my memories back from what happened. So I'm, a, I'm an anomaly in that regard. A lot of people have a lot of memories. And uh, so who knows why? I don't really know what caused it. But um, fortunately, my, I had a lot of things uh, to hand out. They activated that first altar. And from that point, I've started, the others have started almost like a cascade effect of once one came forward and I worked on the reintegration, then the next one came up. And Lou, my partner, is Iroquois and he's trained as a shaman. And uh, we have had sessions where we go into trance together. And no, we're not using drugs for this. And uh, we call in my altars that are next. And he will sit with me in the trance and make sure that what comes is actually me. 
because we've had spirits try to do to fill in so he makes sure that those spirits stay out that what comes is actually me and then i have to do the work of reintegrating this other personality but the other personality has to be willing to merge i'm curious why do you think they activated you There is a group called the Cordium that is a group of extraterrestrials that drip leak information to the NSA. The group that of the NSA that works with them is called the Labyrinth Group. And I know several people who were part of the Labyrinth group. Michael Lee Hill is one of them. Uh, Karen Christine Patrick is another one. Uh, they're, they're the two that are public. There are lots of others. And they take these leaks of information and technology and they give it to the military industrial complex to reverse engineer it. Now, they're part of the NSA. And because of what I am as a soul, there was a job I was supposed to do and the timing mattered and they had to activate me before that time. Now it's, it's something I don't want to talk about publicly, but it was, it had to do with the wing makers stuff. Uh, the real wing makers stuff, not the CIA version of it. And um, <clears throat> in fact, while I was in progress, the CIA blew up the ancient arrow cave, trying to prevent me from being able to do it. And somehow I was taken to the Wingmakers Cave in Australia to finish the job. So, uh, but yeah, that has been done. But I think that particular item had to be done and it had to be done at that time. And I think that's why the NSA activated me. I have not found any other rational explanation. Hmm. So that one was confused. I mean, like I'm confused, but I get it. Okay. So. But um, once it was done, it was done then. I mean, you know, it started. Yeah. So when, I guess, when did you start talking publicly about? September, September of 2016. Before that, I was doing peer counseling in, in the group that we were both admins in. And I would have stayed there. I was perfectly happy doing that. Um, I had no issues with that whatsoever. Um, but I started getting shot at with um, do. And I got shot three times in six weeks. I remember that. I remember you talking about that back then. Yeah. And uh, at that point, it was like, those fuckers are going to kill me. And so Lou and I talked. And because if I go public, it means he is too, whether we like it or not. Uh, and so we remembered Bill Cooper. I don't know if you, if you're old enough to know who Bill Cooper was. I read his book. Yep. Oh. Okay. Bill Cooper used to have a radio show and he had this thing that he said that if you know they're going to kill you to stand under the spotlight. Because mm -hmm. then when they kill you, it verifies everything you said. Mm -hmm. and, 
And so when they hit me the third time and they got me in the right kidney, and to this day, it still bleeds. Um, I told Lou, I said, you know, they're going to kill me. What, you know, the only way I see out of this is to hide in the spotlight, like Bill Cooper said. And he says, you're right, we'll do it. And so I hunted around and I hit the prejudice of I was a woman. I hit the prejudice of I had served with Nachtwaffen. I hit the prejudice that um, I had served with Draco. So I was the enemy. And I finally ended up uh, the group on Facebook, Decoders of Truth. They had me do these long ass threads where everybody in the group and they had 20,000 members everybody in the group vetted me in the group i had i had threads 800 comments long where i had to defend my story to them and these are these are truthers people who do at that point, they were doing research. They were smart. They were with it. They had read the Emerald Tablets. They had studied the Anunnaki. These were people who knew what I was talking about. And I was coming from the position of the enemy. And I had to justify that I knew what I was talking about. And then um, Jay Campbell brought me forward. And that was in September of 2016. And that first interview, there were three people talking and I got confused and looking back on it and watching it again, it's like, it was a shit show. <laughs> but James Rink picked me up and did the next interview with me. And he let me tell my story without a lot of, it, a lot of interruptions. And from that point on, um, I would get an interview every couple of months until, you remember Reality Brief? I think so. Mm -hmm. You you were yeah, on- Yeah, those guys were great. Those guys were great. I think I was on there twice, two or yeah. three times. Yeah, they spent about a year teaching me how to do an interview from the interviewer side. And then one day, YouTube tells me, you're going to have to upload some content or we're going to delete your channel. Seriously. That's what they... Uh, never that, heard of that, but... That's what they did. They told me, you have, you have to start uploading content or we're going to delete your channel. And I'm like, okay. So I thought about it and go, okay. I'm going to just have chats with my friends. And I was, you know, hour, hour and a half chats with, with friends. And they were all people in disclosure movement or related. And I had this one guy from Australia supposed to have me on his show. And at the last minute, he tells me, well, I'm processing something. And frankly, it's more important than you are. Hmm. This is this is the kind of shit I get told. And I got a phone call. Can you can you fill in my guest bailed on me? And I go, OK. And it was on Global Enlightenment Radio Network and. Daryl offered me my own show. And the whole time that he's pitching it, he's like, mama says you're real. Mama says you're real. Mama says you're real. Well, I didn't know who his mama was. She was the DC CIA archivist. And you can prove that's what she was because she sued the CIA for racial discrimination and won. And she came on my show three times. And the third time we got the show that I had hoped for at the beginning, which was 
I gave what I remembered from that first altar, and she said whether it was in my file or not. Now, there was one thing that I remembered that wasn't in my file, and there were a couple of things I didn't remember that were. Did she share your file with you? No, but she shared it with Daryl. That man has read my entire file. He knows everything about me. That doesn't make sense that, you know what I'm saying, that they wouldn't share some of it with you. They wouldn't share it with you or, Lou, you know, send you a copy kind of thing. If, he, if it was well, something that she could share with him, I'd be a little, I'd be, I'd press for that. Well, the trouble is the day that I went in for my spinal fusion surgery, her house got burnt down. Yeah, clear to the ground. All of the files that she had are gone. What a, yeah, how convenient for them then. Yeah, well, I don't think it was a convenient thing because Daryl got his ears burnt. She was asleep in the bed and it's, the fire started in her bedroom. So their intention was to kill her, not to get rid of the files. So it was obviously she had gone too far by doing this. And so their house burnt down on December 7th while I was in surgery. And then on Memorial Day weekend, what the roundtable show, she came on. She verified that everybody in the, in the roundtable that she had had a file on them. So they were real. She didn't go through and verify their individual stories, but she did say that, that they had all been at Montauk. So hmm. at, least they're, at least now they know they're not delusional. Hmm. You know, people, the... people say that, that external validation doesn't matter, but when you get it, it does. Every little bit matters. Yes. Montauk people are the hardest to deal with because the technology puts you everywhere. So yeah. there's no, like you said earlier, you were talking about your book being linear. People want a linear book. And you, it, that's not what you can get out of somebody that experienced Montauk. That's what I've learned. When somebody says, when I start talking about people, it's when did it start? Let's go, boom, boom, boom. Then I remember being in Montauk. And I kind of can throw my hands up in the air because it's my technique of using a timeline on things defines, de depends on linear memory. And so you just kind of throw it out the window. Like my technique of memory doesn't work with Montauk because it's just all over the place. Everybody that's been there is all over the place. So that technology is something that's, uh, yeah, we're I not ready at, to understand quite yet. I was at Montauk when I was six and that's why I don't have linear memory. And, but your technique, because I, we were talking before either one of us were public, you told me about your technique for memory while I was still trying to make sense of, of everything. I learned Ooh. that for me, you put more lines because you have to sort out which altar did what. And that that, that helped tremendously. I might have gaps for that altar, you know, where I went from this one to that 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 one. But it made more sense that way. Hmm. So, yes, your technique does work. You just have to work it. Hmm. <laughs> it's harder, but it still works. How are we doing on time, Penny? I see my record. My, my timer quit working at 74.27. Yeah, uh, I noticed that. I'm like, uh, what happened there? Uh, we have about 20 minutes, maybe 25, something like that. Yeah, I've got, I've got a 7.30. I've got like 15 minutes. And until I got the next one. So it's like okay. 730 my time. So if you want to pause, I can come back and fill the time. We can do that. Um, you want to do me, that? Let me see how much there is. I'll, I'll message you if we if we need more. Okay. 
I'm going to take a quick break. And then, like I said, I just, it's a short one. It should be only like a half hour on the, okay. on the next one. Uh, and recording.